so in this video, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane and we're going to be taking a look at some of the times in the past where the stock market has crashed and take a look at the circumstances and what happened as a result of that. And I hope that this study can help us to develop a bit of an understanding of how the stock market generally moves and maybe that might help us in how we make our investment decisions in the future. All right, so for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the oldest US stock market index. And uh, based on the charts from TradingView, we can see that we have data that goes all the way back to 1897. All right, so the first crash that I would like to talk about is the first stock market crash known as the Panic of 1901 and happened as a result of a squabble between a number of big parties over control of the Northern Pacific Railroad Company. So that happened over here. And what we see is that the market came down by about 46%. So this is the, the 1901 panic. The next one we want to talk about is happened in 1907. And this was caused by a bank run in the US. You know, you deposit your money in the bank. When you, when you lose faith in the banking system and you no longer trust the banks, and then, you know, if everybody at the same time rushes to the banks to withdraw the, their, their money, uh, that's what's called a bank run. So when that happened, we see that in 1907, the markets came down by about another 45%. This happened in, in 1907. The next period to talk about is, I think it's a very interesting period in time. So we are looking at the 1914 to 1920 period. This was when the world was experiencing the first world war. So this world war one was happening and there was a global Spanish flu pandemic. The world was kind of like in lockdown, just as you know, we have been in the last two years, right? But what's interesting in doing this period the market actually rallied by over a hundred percent during the time that there was World War One and the global pandemic. The market actually rallied by over a hundred percent. And then in 1920, all this kind of came to a correction when the market came down by about 46 percent. Then in the 1920s, what we experienced was the Roaring Twenties, right? So in the Roaring Twenties, the stock market rallied by almost 500%. And this was the era when we had a lot of new developments happening in the world, a lot of new inventions, things that we might take for granted today, but, but they didn't exist before the 1920s, like cars, airplanes, movies. I think people today can't imagine a world without like your smartphone and without television and all that. Prior to the 1920s, none of these things even existed. There were no cars, all right? So this was the, the time in which all these things were, were happening. It was really like a period of, of advancement in the world. And then what happened? In 1929, we experienced the Great Depression. And this is basically where the market fell by 90%. There's a 90% correction in the markets in the, during the Great Depression. So the correction for the Great Depression happened between 1929 until 1932. So this was a three year period in which the market was just free falling and everybody kind of like felt that that's it. That's the end, you know, that's it. The stock market, it didn't work. It was a failure, like it's doom and gloom. The world's going to end. But was that what happened? Hmm, let's find out. After the Great Depression, we went into the 1930s and we started seeing a period of recovery we were back on the path of recovery there was like you know some hiccups along the way in 1937 there was another depression during this time the market corrected by 50 percent and then as we continue on in history we come to 1940 and we see this one big red candle here and this was actually the month in which nazi germany invaded Western Europe. And then from 1940 to 1942, the markets collapsed by about <clears throat> 40%. You know, when the whole world is at war, the market is down 40%. There's kind of like a sense of, you know, oh, there is no hope, right? It's doom and gloom in the world. 
we noticed that the turning point of the market happened sometime around April, May of 1942. One of the turning points in the World War II was actually the Doolittle Raid that happened in April 1942. And this is when the American planes took off from aircraft carriers and bombed Tokyo. And this was interestingly coinciding with the very bottom of the market at that point in time. Obviously, they didn't know that, but from retrospect, when we look at it, we can see that, that this was one of the turning points in the market. Uh, World War II was you know, fought from 1939 to 1945. So even in 1942, it was, we were like pretty much only halfway through the war. But what we noticed is that even though the world was still at war, the market started to rally during that time period. And this continued for, you know, quite some time, even, even past when the war had been done. So in 1957, that's where we saw the next recession. And this was known as the Eisenhower recession, in which there was a 21% correction in the market. 1957... Next, in 1962, there was the Kennedy slide, also known as the flash crash of 1962. The market was somehow perceived to be overheated. So, you know, oh, it was due for a correction and therefore a correction kind of happened. This was about around a 26% correction and it was pretty much a V-shaped recovery. We can see that um, this correction was really over in just a matter of months. Then we come to the next period in time, which is quite interesting. And that is between 1966 to 1982. We saw a period of time where the market was kind of just chilling and just kind of like stuck between this particular market range. Like you see the market was just like idle and just bouncing between these two levels for a period of 17 years. What was happening? And so this is the period of time that was also known as the Great Inflation between like 1966 to 1982. Inflation during this time went as high as 15%. And this was basically the culmination of a lot of things that was happening during this period, um, such as, you know, changing fiscal and monetary policies and also there was the oil crisis that was happening. So what we were experiencing is um, the effects of the federal government's um, monetary policies, as well as increasing prices in oil. Inflation hit about 15%. The stock market was stagnant for 17 years. I wonder if some of these sound familiar to what we are facing today. So this had dragged on for 17 years. And finally, later in 1982, there was a breakthrough. The market broke out of the 1,000 point resistance and was well on its way. In 1987, we saw the Black Monday crash. And we, the market came down by 41%. Next one we experienced was 1998, when we had the Asian financial crisis. What we experienced was a 20% drop in the market. Around the year 2001, we experienced the dot-com crash. And this was about 36% correction in the market. So this was dot-com. And then this is the infamous 2008 global financial crisis, which was you know triggered by a number of factors such as the subprime uh, mortgages, the collapse of Lehman Brothers, and the market came down by about 50%, 54%. So basically, if you had investments prior to the financial crisis, basically you have lost 50% of your portfolio. But thereafter, we saw a straight up bull run. There were a few hiccups that happened. In 2018, we, there was the, uh, the possibility of a trade war with China. This is the COVID-19 crash, which uh, basically was a very short-lived recession. The market corrected by about 38%. And then what happened? It basically, you know, bounced right off. It was a V-shaped recovery. And uh, the market made all-time highs within a matter of months. So right now, 
we are still living in the midst of the most recent market downturn, which happened in the first half of this year and got basically everyone panicking. So since the beginning of this year, the Dow Jones came down by about 20% and it appears to be on its way back up. But the truth is, we don't actually know whether or not this we have seen the bottom of the recent decline. And if we look in history, we will see that actually relative to events that we have experienced in the past, the most recent downturn actually is not really, you know, very severe compared to like, oh, COVID, we saw a negative 38%. Global financial crisis, we saw 54%. Dot com was 36%. So we've talked through like many of the important moments in history, which have had some impact on the stock market. What are some of the lessons that we can learn here? So the, I think the first lesson we can learn is that we take a step back and we take a look at the big picture. We can see that in the long term, the stock market is actually trending upwards. I'm going to do another video that explains why this happens. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested to find out about that. The second thing we can learn is that yes, even though the market is in a long term uptrend, it does have its good and bad days and it doesn't really move in a linear pattern in a straight line. And what this tells us is that yes, even though the general trend is up, there is still risk when we invest in the stock market. We cannot expect that we will be right all the time. Now, as we have seen, there have been many periods and times in history where there were corrections in the market, even up to like 90% during the Great Depression. But even so, if you had invested at the height of the Great Depression, today you would still be up and you would be up by quite a bit, but you will also be very old. So mm. I think the third important lesson we can learn here is that events happening in the world have impact and influence over the stock market. And these events are not the same. You know, there are different, there are different circumstances that led to these events and different circumstances surrounding them that lead to how the market responds. And what this means is that when we're making investment decisions, we really have to have some sense of the context that's happening in the world. And we cannot just simply look at the, the price movements in isolation. And this is why I question investing or trading strategies that are simply based on one factor, like moving average crossovers, for example, which, which ignore the larger picture of what's happening out there in the world. And also all we're looking at here is the stock market. These events affect different asset classes in different ways. For example, um, rising interest rates, it will have a different impact on bonds versus on stocks. So I would also question people who, who claim that their technical strategy that, you know, based on technical indicators can be used on every asset class, such as, you know, oh, crypto, Forex, and stocks. You can use this strategy on everything. I would question that because, you know, there are yeah, different events happening in the world, in the background, and they have different impact on the various different asset classes. All right, the last point is that when we were, when we were looking at this chart today, actually what we have been doing is we've been using the log... Okay, let me try to pronounce this word. Log logarithmic. Oh, how do I pronounce this word? Logarithmic. We have been using the logarithmic chart. But actually, if we switch over to the linear chart, what you will notice is that the stock price movements since the 1990s, they are very different from the stock price movements before the 1990s. On the linear scale, you can't even see the 90% correction in the stock market, which happened in 1929. If you look at the from a linear perspective, it, it basically looks like like nothing, like nothing happened, but actually it was a 90% correction in the market. There's a number of reasons for this, right? I mean, why the stock market movements have, have exponentially seemed to have been magnified since the 1990s. One of the reasons, I, I'm not going to go into all of them today, but one of the reasons I think is largely the invention of the internet. And with the invention of the internet, it actually provides access for a larger number, a larger pool of people to get involved in the market. Because prior to the 1990s, I think you you had to have like a stockbroker who was standing on the trading floor and doing the hand signals to buy and sell shares for you. But with the invention of the internet, 
now you can just go on your online stockbroking platform and you can buy and sell shares on demand. You know, as and when you feel like it, you can even be doing it lying in your bed or sitting in the toilet. Access has been really opened up due to the invention of the internet. And along with that, the internet also comes the much faster flow of information. Prior to the internet, you know, you got your information from the TV, from the radio, and even before that, you had to wait for the newspaper, right? So uh, after you've seen the news, then you probably have to make a decision whether you're going to buy or sell your shares, then you have to put a call across to your broker and tell your broker what to do. And basically that has changed today in that the, the flow of information is so instantaneous, it moves so much faster with much more participants and also i guess there's a lot more money flowing in the economy today but that's a, a separate issue which i will address in another video so ultimately i i don't know if this is a good or bad thing what do you what do you think let me know in the comments below all right so that's pretty much it for today um quite an impromptu history story video uh, in an upcoming video, I'm going to expand on some of the things that we talked about today. For example, why do we see the stock market increasing over time, especially the US stock market? Why is it on an upward trend in the long term? And why is it we can expect the likelihood that it's going to continue is pretty high? And what can we do about it? So I'm going to talk about one of the easiest, most straightforward strategies that we can invest in the stock market, knowing that in the long term, it has a pretty good chance of increasing continuously. If you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned for that. That's it for today's video. Like, comment, subscribe if you find it to be helpful. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next one.